So in preparing for this presentation, I started thinking about what would you do differently if you could start over? If somebody, if there was no internet and then today you were going to say, I need a website, I don't have one, I need a website, what would I do? But most of us don't have that luxury because we already have websites, so we can't start over. So the ideas that I'm going to talk about tonight apply whether you're ready to make a new website or whether you're ready to improve the one that you currently have. And while most of my references will be about weddings, these apply to any website. I use these with my consulting clients. We've done this for a private jet charter company, a burglar alarm company, plumber. I've talked to my doctor about this. The same principles apply no matter what your site is. So if you do only corporate work or if you do only other type of specific niche work, these principles will apply, or even if you have multiple websites. So in the early days of the internet, just having a website was enough. If you had a website, you were there, that was good. But these days, that's not good enough. Five years ago, maybe, but now that's not good enough. You have to not only be there, you have to be competitive. It doesn't mean you have the most expensive website. It doesn't mean you have the fanciest website. And it certainly doesn't mean you have more stuff on your website than anybody else, because that doesn't make your website better. Now, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of websites for people just like you. I've seen thousands of websites for wedding professionals and just websites in general, not just as a consumer, because that's what we all do. Every day we're on looking at websites. But as part of my work, I've seen thousands of websites. And I know what makes a good website, what doesn't make a good website, and I'm going to run some, through some of those things today. But you're not going to have to scrap your website to use what you've heard. Most of the websites I see are just trying to be too much. They're trying to be too much. <clears throat> so a website has unlimited space, virtually. I mean, realistically, you have unlimited space. That's a problem. It's a problem because you have unlimited space, so some people try to put too much. Think about it if your attic had unlimited space. You just keep throwing stuff up there, throwing stuff up there, throwing stuff up there. But because you have limited space in your garage, in your closet, wherever in your office, you have to decide. Because your hard drive only has a certain amount of space, you have to decide, what am I going to put on there? Well, you should be thinking about your website that way too. Not how much can I put on there, but what do I really need to have there? Have you created an elevator pitch for your business? You know that 30 second pitch, if you got in the elevator with somebody and they said, hey, what do you do? Could you tell them before you got to the 10th floor? Could you do that? You should need to know that because if you go to a networking event and somebody says, hey, what do you do? That's it, you're on. It's like microphone in your face. What are you gonna do right now? So you need to know that. Your website is kind of like an expanded elevator pitch. That's what it is. How much time do you give a website before you decide if it's for you or not? Not a whole lot. I do a presentation called Five Reasons Why They Leave Your Website in Five Seconds. That's what we do. We don't give people a lot of time. So your website has to be the one that says within five seconds, you're at the right place. Stick around. Take a look around. You're going to find what you need over here. So practice your elevator pitch and then try to make your website match that. I wrote a presentation a while back called 10 Ways Your Website's Killing Your Business. And 10 Ways Your Website's Killing Your Business was actually started because of a videographer who was a client of mine for over 10 years. He was advertising with us. He had been in print, BI, before the internet. Anybody here remember that? Before the internet, there was life and work. Some of you may not, but most of you probably remember what BI was. Well, before the internet, this guy was advertising, and then the internet came along, and he put a website up. And he made the website himself. And I'm not saying you shouldn't make your website yourself, but if it looks like you made it yourself, that's a problem. It's like, I could do the videotaping. You could give me, Julie could give me your camera. I could hold it. I could make a video. It's going to look like I did it. And that's a problem. If I could do it as good as you, well, then I'm a professional, aren't I? But I can't. So the same thing with that. Well, BI, this guy had, a, had his website. And he called to cancel his ad. The guy had been advertising with me for over 10 years and wants to cancel his ad. Why? Not getting any business. So he's blaming the ad. Makes sense, right? Not getting into business has to be the ad's fault. So I said, let me follow the trail here and let me see what was happening. If no one was clicking on his little thumbnail image, the problem is maybe traffic or maybe it's the thumbnail image, but they were. If no one was clicking from there, from his profile, 
over to his website, well then let's fix that. Let's change the words, let's change the pictures, let's put something else on there that makes it more attractive. But they were, as a matter of fact, he had the second highest traffic for any videographer in his market and category. Second highest. So the problem wasn't there. It wasn't a problem that nobody was going. It wasn't a problem that they didn't like what they were seeing. They did. And then I went to his website. And then I fell off my chair. And I couldn't believe how bad it was. And it's not because he was a videographer. It's because the site just had so many flaws that I sat down and I wrote 10 ways your website's killing your business in one sitting. I just sat down and I just started typing. After I wrote him a two-page, 10-point, single-spaced email telling him exactly how to fix his website, he didn't cancel his ad. He didn't change his website. He accepted that the traffic was there, but he wouldn't accept that his website was the problem. And he kept it that way for 18 more months. What's the definition of futility? Doing the same thing, the same way, expecting a different result.